One is culturally right now, we live in a time when the workforce today is is emerging with people who grew up communicating just through their phones, just through mm-hmm. texting, um, written communication or uh, social media. And those things aren't bad. I think there's a place for that. But when it's the only way you communicate, if you don't understand how to sit down face to face with somebody and have a conversation mm-hmm. and look them in the eyes and and ask clarifying questions and to give them the benefit of the doubt if the first thing they said didn't quite sit right with you. Those are skills that we have to learn. And I think this new generation of leaders, especially, Mm -hmm. um, the odds are kind of stacked against them because they've had the luxury and they've had the crutch of being able to just default to technology. And I always talk with our team about anything that needs to be communicated that's sensitive, Mm -hmm. potentially inflammatory, emotional, could be misconstrued or misunderstood, never do that in writing. Always do that through a dialogue because you you miss out on the tone and the inflection. You miss out on, right. on the body language. And, you know, we have this primal thing where when we can see each other and we can connect face-to-face or, you know, I, I understand you guys do so many things virtually. Mm-hmm. I mean, video is a great solution as well. But, you know, kneecap to kneecap is ideal. If you can't do that, do it over video. If you can't do that, do it on a phone call. But mm-hmm. don't send a grenade across on an email or a text because it's never going to go well. And so I I think that's one thing going on is culturally that we just, we have to be aware of that. And we have to be uh, cognizant of the fact that when there's a sensitive conversation, you just can't persuade well over text and email. You know, I grew up in sales. I've I've done sales my whole life and um, enjoyed the process of selling and and promoting things that I believed in and things Mm -hmm. that would help other people. And anytime it, it came to actually discussing and persuading and and negotiating, I I realized that anytime I try to do that over an email, I always lost the deal. Yeah, The email is really good as a follow-up to say, hey, let me send you the summary of what we discussed. Let me send you a a, a file, the contract. I can forward that over to you via email. Mm -hmm. But if I'm having to persuade you, I should be asking you questions and more questions and and hearing you say, hmm, uh-huh, and I understand. And I should be listening that if you aren't saying those things, maybe we're not tracking and I need to slow down. And, right. you know, when we get in sync, our, our voice and our ears are a huge piece of communication. So we don't want to throw that out. And again, mm-hmm. there's a place for text and, and emails and all those things as well. Uh, the second thing is these are skills to learn. And so you ask about younger leaders. They've got the dynamic of culturally, this is a new experience for them if they grew up on their smartphones, and that's the only way they've communicated. And then the other thing is, I I remember when I was a young leader, I was terrible at communication because Mm. I didn't understand how much it mattered. Mm -hmm. I Again, I assumed it had occurred when it didn't occur. And then I I just needed to develop these skills. And so communication is a skill that anybody can develop. There's plenty of resources out there to learn how to communicate more effectively. And for me, I I think as a young leader, I felt like being a leader meant I need to speak and I need to have the answers and I need to know what to say and have all my stuff together. And what I've learned is communication, especially in leadership, is so much more about listening and listening and inquiring and empathy than it is about telling people what to do and where to go.